A lot of people ask me why I started Chinese. There is a long story and a short story. In the film, you already heard about the short story. I wanted to teach my children how to learn Chinese very quickly in a very attractive way. There's a longer story. I grew up in an artistic family. My mother is a calligrapher. This is sort of the work she did, and this is she didn't do that one. Her master did, and so I grew up in an environment when the whole family, my my father, he created a beautiful ceramic art, and this is the work between my parents. So, by growing up in this mud, brushes, arts, I always wanted to do something. Unfortunately, I didn't have the talent, so I had to study science. And then, <laughs> when I was doing my MBA project, I started writing、uh, books on computer, and then I started my own internet company. And I started pursuing my career or using my left brain because I forgot that I do have a right brain. And that's when I faced the difficulty of showing my children how they could appreciate the culture I grew up, the root they grew,、um, the root I grew up. I start thinking. Is there any way that I can break down the Great Wall of Chinese language? So I used my computer. I broke down thousands of characters. Earlier in the film, you saw a spaghetti chart of the characters. That's just what I did. At night, I enciphered the characters one by one. After doing thousands of them, I tried to identify the pattern. Is there any simple way to recognize a few? Once you know a few, then you can build many more. So people heard, oh, you have a super duper almighty method to teach Chinese. Can you give us a talk at TED? I said sure. So I gave a talk last year、uh, in Long Beach, and the TED talk、um, went well. There was an audience about 1,000 people. One of the people in the audience called Bill Gross. He is quite big in LinkedIn, so he blocked something, a, a few sentences talking about my method. In two days, when I was still at TED, enjoying my time. I received about 8,000 people's messages asking me to develop it further. They didn't even know what that was at that time. And then、uh, things got got worse and worse.、Um, Forbes、uh, wrote an article about my talk because the editor was in the audience. And then my, when my talk went online in May,、uh, the whole thing went、um, to the direction that I could no longer control. So very quickly, I put up a website. I put up a Facebook page. And then I put up a team together with three illustrators, two animators, with an app team, and with the people making videos and people、um, providing answers and the research assistant. Every day I teach on Facebook with a new phrase, new characters, and we have more than 62,000 people、uh, following us on Facebook, and we have a couple hundred thousand people on our website. We also host the, the weekly exam to see how well you do. And at the same time, we also want to have a lot of fun. So we have the the word search every month, and every month we give the word search. We give you the the fun games, and we do everything on social media. And then after that, of course, we started putting the whole content together because some people they prefer doing things in a systematic way. So today you will see we have an iBook with an eBook, so you can learn Chinese in a very easy, fun way at your own speed on your iPad or your iPhones. And this is the app we are working on. It's going to be awesome, which will coming out in a couple months. And then not only the you will learn each character by looking at the shape, you can also look at the beautiful animations. And why animations are important? That you can learn how to write because just like playing guitar or playing the piano, you need to have the right fingerings when you write Chinese characters. You need to have a correct stroke order. And、um, Unexpectedly, that was not my intention when I created Chinese. We received amazing reward and amazing recognition from、uh, the media. For example, in January, we won the Wallpaper Design Award, which、uh, is a ca categorized in、uh, Life Enhancer of the Year. You know who is our competitor? That was Google Glass and Singapore Airlines. And as a small team.、Uh, Pure startup, not even yet a company form. We felt very proud and very privileged to be recognized and appreciated by lots of people. And not only that,、um, yesterday we actually also announced we've been shortlisted by the Design Museum,、uh, the best designs of the year. We need your help. On the fourth of April next week, there is an audience vote. 
and we would love to win the award if we could. So if you really appreciate and enjoy Chinese, please go to their website and vote for Chinese. Okay, so what is Chinese after all the fuss? What is it about? We all know there are so many characters in Chinese language. Some people say 20,000, some people say 100,000. It doesn't matter how many it is. Don't be scared. You don't need to know that many. I don't know that many. We cannot get around by knowing a couple hundred. But you do know, need to know a, a lot of phrases then, and this is why Chinese is powerful. This is a spaghetti chart to remind you how I develop a whole thing on my computer. Uh, you can uh, navigate through from one character to another. And of course, the app will follow the same methodology, but will be very beautiful, very charming, very easy, and a lot of fun. OK, let's dive in. This is a person we all know. When you have two together, that means to follow, three together, that's a crowd. When the person stretched the arms wide, this person is saying it was this big. And then when the person saying this big, you put extra stroke on top, that means men, adult men. Why is that? Because in ancient China, men had long hair. They had a pin on top with a pin on top. That means men. Now, very quickly, you learn five characters. What else can you do? You build phrases. Big person is an adult. Big crowd is the public, and the crowd is big means people. And then when the man and person together, that means madame. Why is it madame? Because women used to belong to men, so it's madame. And by adding another stroke, you build many more characters. And the character on the right, you can see when someone stretched really hard, big person stretched really hard, his belt falls off. He had too much. When you put too much together, you have a wife. So too much, too much, that means wife. Person and a fish, of course, is a mermaid. And then you add extra stroke, you build many mo more sentences and many phrases. This is the essence of Chinese method. So far, you only learn one character called person, but you have built many more by knowing one. This is a tree. We all know two is the woods, three is the forest, and put a plank underneath a tree, that means foundation. A person, this squashed person, is leaning against the tree is to rest, because in ancient China, there was no Starbucks, because people rested against the trees. This is a mouse, then you put together means to shout, three together means product or, or variety of qualities, because when you have a lot of mouse talking, everybody forms a view, that means opinion. It's a fire, two together means very hot, three together means a lot of flames, and then you start building more phrases. This is just the logic. I'm go not going to go through the whole book with you, but something really interesting you can play with. For example, fire and big means angry. Big fire is big fire, because big and fire, big is an adjective. When fire is very big, according to Chinese medicine, the, p the person's temper is very big, so it means the person is angry. OK, let's look at the animations. This is a mountain. You can learn how to write at the right straight straw order. Fire mountain together, of course, that's a volcano. A mouth of a volcano is a crater. A resting volcano is the dormant volcano. You laughed when I said two women together means argument. It's actually from very sad historical fact, not only in China, but around the world. It shows gender inequality. The shape of the woman, originally you found the shape of a woman kneeling on the floor, bowing to her man. So when we have two women together underneath the same roof, uh, in Chinese tradition, that one family may host three generations, four generations together. So when you have so many generations of wives and uh, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law together, inevitably is domestic conflict. Three women together is adultery. I don't know why. Okay, this is work, and you put work person together, it's a worker. But if person, a manual work, that means artificial. A female worker is a female worker. This is a character for, can, can someone tell me? If you get it right, I'm going to give you a screensaver. <laughs> okay, it's what, the gentleman in glasses? King. How about you, the little girl there? What is that? King. King. Okay, you both got it right. We give you the screensaver. Can you someone re record that down? 
Okay, that means king. Okay, can someone, you can't be native, okay? Can someone tell me what that means in the, on the left? Not, not you, you've done it. Okay, that little boy? A son? Yeah, the boy. Okay, a woman and a boy together, that means good. Why is that? Of course, the historians will tell you that means good because women was only good when she had a son. But in Chinese, we love modern interpretation. We could say a boy would have a good life when he had a good girl. A female king is a queen. The son of the king, of course, is a prince. This is the year of horse. So we have a horse. Um, the character on the left means white. That's actually a combination between the sun with a dot on top. When you look at the sun, point to the sun, all you see is all white out. So the white horse and the prince is our Prince Charming. That also means Mr. Right, because Mr. Right or Prince Charming is very Western expression. In Chinese, we don't translate word by word, but you can find something matching. So Chinese is not a translation tool. Chinese is to bridge the cultural gap between the East and the West. So if you have some expression in the West and we can find something matching, but we don't do translation. Okay, now we have something fun. Do you remember the square? It means the mouse. And we can play with it as well. The character on the left is a sheep. I love sheep. In Chinese characters, if you see sheep as the element, then that means something either very sheepy or something beautiful. For example, the character for beautiful is a sheep and big. So a big sheep, it's beautiful. But put a mouse next to the sheep. That means the sheep bleeping. Meh. The one on the left is a, come on, cow. But what is, how about the cow with the mouth? Moo. How, 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 I, I, don't, I don't know how cows do, but that's moo, okay? That's cow moo. On the left, we have a dog. And when dog opens its mouth, it barks. Oof, oof. On the left, we have a bird. And when the bird opens its mouth, it sings the bird song. So Chinese is as easy as it is. People ask me, why, why you think it's easy? I don't deserve that much credit. I do a little bit of work, but Chinese is actually quite easy. I will explain why in a sec. So for us, Chinese is not only an educational language project, it is also a design project. We put huge amount of effort designing each character. For example, the version of woman, you see a French woman and a Japanese woman. And in addition to playing with different shape and form, we need to consider how each character has been used. Sometimes they can be standing alone, sometimes they need to be combined with other characters and has to work as well. And why I say Chinese is Chinese is not as difficult as people say. Yeah, there are 20,000 characters or more, but you don't need to know that many first. Second is, can you tell me, is there any other foreign language or native language you know that can sustain, can go on for thousands of years, used by billions of people? I think Chinese is the only one I know. If that's a language can be passed on for so many years by so many people, it can't be that hard. And also, if you look at how the language is created, especially in Chinese, imagine I'm an ancient caveman living in China. I look at the sun, I drew the shape of the sun. I look at the table, I drew the shape of the table. I look at the dog and my wife, and I look at the, the iPad, and I drew an iPad. And so I drew things I saw. And not only I drew the things I saw, I could pass on and communicate with people I didn't know. And then they can carry on spreading the same symbols again and again. So it can't be that hard. 
and it gets harder and harder, of course, when you want to express something more sophisticated and something with uh, a deeper meaning or more refined meanings. And that's when it becomes very hard. But Chinese people were smart. They could even create verb from the symbols. Like when I gave you an example, the person is resting against the trees. That means to rest. Or the, uh, the, the, ca the character to express to trust is actually a person and speak together. When a person speaks, you have my word, therefore you can trust me. So there are many layers. You can just interpret it and you learn the stories, you learn the history, you learn the culture. I was talking to one of the Apple people here. He said his girlfriend is a Chinese girl. So I said, that's great because by using Chinese, you not only can, can recognize, okay, that's the beef, that's a cow, and that is the pork, that's fish, that's bug in the restaurant. You can also understand your Chinese girlfriend's psychology and you can understand their philosophy. You can understand their culture. And that's a true essence of communication. Th communication is not just saying, how are you, thank you, and going to the store, you can buy something. That's all basic. We can sort that out easily. Other people, hundreds of providers have done it. But if you want, that, want to understand China, understand Chinese culture, the language, the literature, the mentality, to work with your counterpart, either in the school, in business, you need to understand from your heart. Knowing characters is a good start, and it's a very fun start. Thank you. OK, I'm going to show you a bit how this book works and how much you can do by having it or how little you can't do. Yes, we have the logic and we have the method, and the purpose of this book is not it's not going to teach you how to go to the shop to buy something. It's not to ask directions. It's not something utility. It is to give you the joy of the knowledge. So in the book, I was showing off a little bit. By giving me very little time, you have two minutes, I will give you 20 characters. You have two hours, I will give you a couple hundred. And of course, you need to study hard and revise it again. But that's the essence of the book. You build your characters, your knowledge very quickly by reading the stories, by recognizing uh, the images, and then by reinforcing. You keep seeing person again and again. Next time, you will know. You see, keep seeing fish again and again. You will know. And that's the purpose of this method. But at the end, how far can you go? You can start building some simple sentences if you read. Each page is only a couple characters. If you keep reading from page 1 to page 140, you can start constructing something meaningful. For example, such a beautiful princess, such a long sentence, the sweat stinks, the instruction from God. Everybody be careful. Or you can say, oh, uh, the lamb is going home, everybody is safe, the rain is too much, and you can talk about, oh, my sister, is the younger sister is going to Japan, how much does this flower cost? Does that is that meaningful? I think it is. And of course, you are not going to write a dissertation in economics in Chinese after reading this book. But I don't believe any other language curriculum, one book can achieve the same. So what you can do is to recognize symbols by tripling the content of this book, this e-book. You will be able to have similar comprehension of my comprehension in Japanese. How good is my Japanese? I don't speak a word of Japanese. I have no problem going to Japan. I go to Japan, I recognize the road signs, I read the tube map, I open the newspaper, I know there's an earthquake in Nagoya, this movie star had a baby, and then there's a cabinet reshuffle. I know the dates of that newspaper. I know the month. I know the basic meaning of that, whatever literature I come across. I would not know the details, but I will know what it's about, and that's about the comprehension you can have. Not only this book, if I triple the volume of this, you will be able to achieve that. You won't be able to speak, because I don't teach you how to speak. I won't teach you, you will know how to pronounce. And at the same time, when I'm telling you this story, you have to think about your questions, because I'm going to answer them. We also push our limitation in creativity. So we picked up a, a story, very sweet little story, called Peter and the Wolf. So we will show you, this is a character sheet. 
and then we show you a very sweet story by using Chinese characters and illustrations. And you can see the bird and the duck, they are having a quarrel. And then the end, oh, the cat, and there's a grandfather, and you see lots of characters in this sheet, and then it's a very sweet, I would say, not only for children, but also for adults. And this is how we want to bring uh, the creativity and the beauty and the knowledge and the uh, reinvention of the ancient language to the world. And of course, I started the whole journey uh, from trying to attract my children to have the interest in learning. And it's amazing that more and more people are interested. And I hope we can create more with all your support. Okay, questions? Uh, yeah, let's wait for the microphone. When we are waiting for it, you can see this is our beautiful index page. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, hi, Xiaolang. Um, so first of all, I'd like to say um, that I thought this was, a, this was a brilliant idea. And as, uh, as someone that grew up in the UK, but with um, Chinese cultural roots, um, and spending many Saturday mornings going to Chinese school when I was younger, I can definitely relate um, to the experience of, sort of the difficulties of uh, learning Chinese. And, and I think um, that this concept is fantastic. Um, and it's something that actually, you know, my parents have taught me before. Um, they've said, oh, look, if you look at it, it d they do look like pictures. But to be able to um, have it designed in this way and to have it so sort of graphically appeasing, um, I think that's a brilliant step. Um, so, so what I was quite interested in is uh, that you kind of touched upon as well is about the, the actual design process because you mentioned that that was actually an integral part um, to your project, really. And um, my background at the moment um, is that I'm I'm a doctor, which I noticed um, on on there it was big man. <laughs> so that that's quite good um, to know. Um, but. Uh, yeah, basically, I was thinking that, a lot, that there's actually a lot of similarities that can be drawn between l trying to learn Chinese and trying to, to learn medicine, because I feel that medicine as well is a field where actually there are a lot of hidden rules, but they're not very explicit. Um, and maybe sort of, because this is something that I've actually you been know, toying with. You know, learning medicine in a s with the same methodology or using Chinese or Chinese way to learn uh, medicine yeah, no. terms. So, so I was thinking of um, maybe using good design to make learning medicine oh. more approachable. I, uh, that, that, that was the key, really. And I was just wondering. That's a great idea yeah, because you need a lot of uh, graphic thing to show the. Yeah, and, and I was just wondering whether you could um, talk us through a bit more in the detail creative about process. the creative process. Because I understand you work with Noma Bar. Um, yeah. And just at what time did you sort of collaborate with him? Was it before the TED talk? Or, or OK, so thank you. That's a great yeah. point. I, I actually learned the medicine a little bit. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to learn acupuncture. And I often uh, just, I, I didn't have a license. I was a student, so I, I put the needles all over me, everywhere. And I fell asleep. And so my mother was horrified every morning when she saw me on bed <laughs> with the needles all over. So yeah, I understand what you said. Um, the creative process. Uh, before my TED talk, all I had was my system on my computer. And whenever I wanted to teach either my kids or other people, we just sat in the kitchen, and I drew on the napkins. And I said, OK, you see the correlation? Once you know tree, two, and three, and all the things. And I, I started doing it. And then the, the, the napkin became too small. So I started using A4, A4 small. And then I started using the, uh, the A2 size. And I couldn't find anything bigger. The A2, after accumulating a couple hundred A2 paper, then I ran out. And then that's why I started doing other things. Yeah, my test talk, I, when I was preparing for it, I actually commissioned five different illustrators because I gave them exactly the same briefing. I wanted to see who can c interpret my design, uh, my concept. And I deliberately didn't want to talk to anyone who already read or write Chinese because I want to make sure that every single creation, every single design is literally from a beginner or from a Westerner's point of view or something universal, at least. 
So I chose the designers which just don't read or write. They have zero influence, zero bias. And from there, I, after five, I kicked little frogs, and then Norma's design came out, stood out. So uh, I started commissioning him to do that. And then, of course, it's a big project. So eventually, we have three illustrators working on the project. So the whole Chinese ebook is actually done by three illustrators. And it looks like done by one person. In fact, it was done by three. And at the same thing, we keep the style consistent. But at the same time, when we want to explore each character, what we did is we did several designs from hand drawing until uh, we do the, the graphic on computer. And then we print out and we test. And I go around all my friends from all ages, all different linguistic backgrounds, all different uh, cultural backgrounds. I show them, oh, what do you think that is? What is this? What is this? And, I, and then if they tell me, most of them tell me that's right, I said, OK, uh, maybe that, that works. And if people have doubt or they hesitate, then that may not work. And my most critical judge you could imagine are my children. So they are the final gatekeepers. And they will say, oh, mommy, that's rubbish. I don't like it. I like this color. I like that design. And even all my films, they have to go through the music. OK, mommy, I don't like that music. I like that music. So because the one is they are honest, and second, they are not too polite, and they will get things right for me. And the same thing, it's not only just one single character. You can see that the horse, we actually went through, I can't remember how many versions, maybe 10, 20 different versions. And we try, we play around. We didn't want to try to use the traditional Chinese pictograms because it's only the pictogram, grammatic uh, characters in Chinese language is only composed of like 4%. Most the characters are not pictograms. So we don't want to fall into the cliche that, oh, yeah, in the Oracle, Oracle Bone script, uh, in, the, in the Seal script, and they, they look this way. We don't want to go for that uh, historical uh, tracking because hundreds of scholars have done it. And that's all other people do. And we don't do that. We want to use it in the modern interpretation and look at from our point of view. And then we draw something which is totally, uh, I would say, we just don't do any research. We don't research on the origin. We do research on the literature, on the accuracy of um, uh, the etymology. But in terms of design, we, we literally just jump out any box. We put ourselves, we, we created a format we wanted to do. And from there, we create. And we, we have no limit how we want to play with the words in terms of the design, in terms of graphic. But in terms of the knowledge, that has been thoroughly researched and very carefully presented. There's a question over here. Yes. Hi. Can you oh, oh, there's one more. OK, sorry. Yeah. Um, hi, thanks. Sorry. And you want to be next, OK? I arrived slightly late, so I apologize if I'm asking something that you've already said. Um, I started learning Chinese, but I was um, told to learn it phonetically as opposed to what you're saying, because they said, oh, it, sorry. Yeah. Go they on. said yeah. it would be easier mm -hmm. for a, a westernized person to Get, get understand mm -hmm. now um, I found it really easy even phonetically because it makes so much sense mm. I mean a language has been going for so long obviously does make sense yeah um, now are you are you trying to say that this is gonna help I mean I mean if, if I just say to you well, which one is which one is going to be easier you know if you, as a Westerner who looks at characters and, and it, it boggles my brain, yeah, you know, because this way looks great, but phonetically I found it really easy as well. Yeah, okay, so can I, in my view, it's not because I'm native. I always put my brain into your shoes, so I try to think from your position. Both are equally easy. You just need a method. And before... The written form used to be difficult because there was no systematic method out there to take the non-native speakers or readers to take through the journey quickly. And having fun, having design elements certainly helps. Speaking is not that hard. The same reason as reading, because the grammar in Chinese is very, very straightforward. If I want to say, uh, I eat today, I'm eating now, I ate yesterday, I will be eating, I have eaten. In English, it's all different. In Chinese, it's the same. It's say, I eat now, I eat tomorrow, I eat on Sunday, I eat last year. 
is the same, and there's no gender, just like in French, you have vachich. Is that la or li? It's confusing. But in Chinese, there's no gender. Okay, and in English, there's certain gender, yeah, but he or she. But in Chinese, in speaking, it's the same. In writing, you can differentiate them, but you don't need to if you don't want to. And the grammar is super easy. Phonetically, it's not as hard as it sounds. And the four tones is the matter of practice. You tune your ears a couple times, you will get there. And you just need to take out this psychological barrier. Come on, it's a language spoken by. 800 million people in Mandarin, and plus other dialects, altogether 1.2 billion people. I don't think their IQ is all up to 140. I don't think everybody is that educated. The school system is not as developed as the Western world. They don't have the clubs. They don't have the the dedicated teacher de de design all that. Not everybody has it, but everybody is speaking it. Everybody is reading it. So it can't be that hard. I think I think thi this kind of concept of of language I think could be pl applied to other languages as well. So I'm just wondering if you um, may maybe in the future would plan to do something with other languages or collaborate with anyone else in a similar type of kind of learning. I hope so. Yes, I hope so. And I certainly know this method works on Japanese and Japanese country as the example I said. I don't speak Japanese, but I read it. And certainly will work. On our website, we also identified: okay, is this simplified form or traditional form or kanji? And surprisingly, most characters they share the same form. And even if sometimes there has slight variation, we always point that out. And can I answer one other question? Uh, not yet. Uh, we not only show you simplified and traditional. It's just like. You have British English and American English. You say loo, I say toilet, and you say flat, I say apartment. It's not the difference between flavor and flavor, organization and organization. There are different usages. I say I'm knuckered. If I say that, Americans would understand. I say this, this. I, I say I'm very thick. In England, yeah, we understand, but in America, they say what? You are thick? What do you mean? So this type of expression, the, the regional difference, is just like the difference between traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese. I'm afraid in real world you come across both. So I'm afraid you just need to know both, and it's not that hard. But to apply to other languages, I was told that um, it might work very well in German, and because the German how it's been composed. Is there any German speaker here? I don't speak German, but I can understand the logic, and I know a little bit of French. I know a little bit of English, and yeah, I can say yes, but、I、haven't yet identified the pattern. And yeah, if I have、um, the very long life, I would love to do that. And also, if you guys can help me accelerate the growth of Chinese, then I will have spare time to develop other things, such as speaking, such as other languages. I would love to carry on learning as well. Any other question? Yes.、Uh, can you please wait for the microphone? Hello. Hi.、Um, how long has it taken you to get from point A to, if you like, B now? If you'd say.、Uh, what What do you mean from A to B? So, when you feel you first kind of started the project, obviously you started on the napkins when you're writing and so yes. on. Yes. But I'm saying when you kind of. All right, we're gonna we're gonna make this now. We're gonna make this into a right. product. Right.、Um, it, it's a very surreal journey for me. Before my TED talk, that was really just my private project.、Um, I'm a natural born geek, so I do things other people may not understand or appreciate at home on my computer. And when I broke down those characters, I just thought, ah.、Oh, I have some question, and I'm really curious about that. And should I try to find the answers? So it took me two years. At night, when the kids are in bed, and then I deciphered those thousands of characters on my computer. And the TED talk that was merely sharing my private project, and、uh, I think most of you have seen it. Um, it's very simple. Of course,、um, I practice a lot, and I I make I wanted to make sure、uh, to share at most in that short period of time. 
And also, I know TED Talk was go always going online, and I didn't want my children to be embarrassed by the time they grew up and saw my talk. Oh, that was rubbish. So I put a lot of effort preparing for it. And that was not really until um, the response from people. Actually, that was a, a very important point. It's not about how many people love it. I, amongst all the many emails I received, many of them, uh, uh, about a couple hundred of them, they were from parents who have different children and different condition. Like one of the emails, very, very early email, a mother wrote to me after she saw the blog Bill Gross wrote, and that was only one single iPhone photography, uh, about the eight characters I introduced in my talk. And she said she was watching that blog on her computer with her five-year-old sitting on her lap, and she couldn't believe it. But uh, her child had learning difficulty, so they had to do homeschooling, and, and there was no way she could learn. They tried everything. When, they s when she saw the picture on her computer, in five minutes, she started drawing Chinese characters. And this is a mother has been struggling teaching her own child, learn anything. And then she couldn't believe that her daughter was drawing the most notorious language. And messages like this, I, I had tears in my eyes. You just can't believe when they wrote to you from their heart. And many, many emails like that, messages like that from parents with disabled children or children with different conditions. And they said, this is amazing. We would love to learn. And when you carry on receiving emails like that, you know you have to carry on. Y you, need, y you can't give up. And of course, the benefit is the rest of the public can also learn as well. And one thing I do um, see Chinese is it's a, it's a social movement I would like to see. Of course, I play a role in a teacher without a license, and, <laughs> and I'm not even a linguist or, or a designer, but now it seems like everything's been put in together, and I really appreciate my amazing world-class team have been working with me and I gave them a lot of hard time because very few of the people in my team are native speakers and I gave myself a very challenging task. If I can't teach my team how to read Chinese, how can we teach the rest of the world? And the, the amazing thing is one day I was in the app meeting in my basement. We don't have even a proper office. So uh, we all work from anywhere in the world. And then I converted my children's playroom. Sorry, children. Um, I converted their playroom into the Chinese war room. So one day we had the app meeting there with the app team. And then I couldn't stop laughing when I saw my ad app engineers started writing Chinese characters on post-it, sticking on my walls. And that was the moment I knew I made it. And they, they, they pick up the pens and they pick up the poster, they started writing characters and then as if th they are natural, as if that's native. And they just do it. I didn't even realize that they were writing Chinese characters. And that was the moment I know, okay, it works. So can you tell me, okay, I've been talking. Can you tell me, why do you want to learn Chinese? Why do you want to, oh, you actually I don't. My friend signed this up. <laughs> yes. If I can find out what she's saying about me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a microphone. Oh, you don't? Yeah. So I can find out what she's saying about me to That's her friends. That's a very good incentive. Yes. Okay. All, all I hear is Chinese, Chinese, Ingwa, Chinese, Chinese. Ingwa. Chinese. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, we, we did a poll and we do that very often on our Facebook and I often ask you, w what do you want? Because I don't want to uh, close the door and spend one year doing something you don't want. So we often ask you, what do you want? And I ask, why are you learning Chinese? Your motivation is important for me. And a lot of people, surprisingly, instead of telling me, oh, it's an upcoming superpower and it's practical, I want to uh, enhance my job opportunity, instead of saying that, yeah, some people say that, 40, 45%, or even, yeah, 50% of people, they say, because I'm a curious soul, or because I'm, I love learning. So this is so inspiring. Of course, the utility level is very, very powerful, but at the same time, I'm always curious why people are learning, and this is what drives me. I would love to carry on tackling problems, and be previously in Chinese project, the problem was, 
Chinese is difficult. That's the first time I said Chinese is difficult. And of course, a lot of people want to learn, but if you consider how many people in the world, non-English speakers, how many of them are learning English? I would say billions. But how many people in the world are learning Chinese? 60 million. Does that sound a lot? Not at all. Com considering how many non-Chinese speakers they are, do they want to learn? I think some of them do. Why are they not learning? Because they think it's too hard. But if it's very easy, would you want to learn? I think so. Do you want to learn? Yeah. Hey, come on. <laughs> OK. I assume so. <laughs> so if you want to learn, to what degree you will carry on learning? I will continue providing joy, knowledge, ability, the, the eff effectiveness. And after that, of course, you need to move on. You can't stay on with Chinese forever. Because like, if you learn your English from Sesame Street, you are probably not going to write your university dissertation from Sesame Street. And the same as Chinese, I will take you to the next level. From there, you will be able, just like uh, if you know how to drive a car, and you want to become a racing car driver, go to another school, try something else. And Chinese alone is not going to be enough. OK, so try everything else. Don't just stick with me alone, OK? Do something else as well. Just like when I learned English, how did I learn that? 12 years ago, I moved to England. Before, I never lived in any English-speaking countries. So all I did, I watched Still a Little, again and again, 50 times. I <laughs> not only Still a Little, I watched about 50, 100 movies. Each movie, I watched 10, 20 times. I post every second whenever I do not understand. What is clean slate? That was my question to my ex-boyfriend at that time. What is clean slate? What is very thick? What is super duper? That's the thing you don't learn. You don't learn in the textbook. And that's the thing you just need to experience and explore. And then after that, of course, I did everything at the same time. I was reading. I knew I was, oh, I'm going to study in Cambridge. I'd better be smarter. So I picked up The Economist. And I started drawing a line, underline every single vocabulary I didn't know. So ended up with almost every word. <laughs> and of course, over every issue of Economist, after you read 50, 100 copies of Economist, the underline, the, the red lines are getting rare and rare. That's how you learn a language. And what Chinese can give you, it's a very happy shortcut. But once you get there, if you want to explore, you want to comprehend something deeper, you want to be able to speak, you need to put serious effort. And of course, if I can really speed up with your help buying the book here in the store, iTunes, if, if I have your help, then we can make ourselves self-sustainable. And then from there, I can do more things, teach you how to speak. I have a lot of ideas here already. Are we with you? Okay, thank you very much. And I hope you have a better <laughs> by looking at the shape. You can also look at the beautiful animations. And why animations are important? that you can learn how to write. Because just like playing guitar or playing the piano, you need to have the right fingerings when you write Chinese characters. You need to have a correct stroke order. And um, unexpectedly, that was not my intention when I created Chinese. We received amazing reward and amazing recognition from uh, the media. For example, in January, we won the Wallpaper Design Award, which uh, it's a ca categorized in uh, Life Enhancer of the Year. You know who is our competitor? That was Google Glass and Singapore Airlines. And as a small team, a pure startup, not even yet a company form, we felt very proud and very privileged to be recognized and appreciated by lots of people. And not only that, um, yesterday we actually also announced we've been shortlisted by the Design Museum uh, the best designs of the year. We need your help. On the 4th of April, next week, there is an audience vote, and we would love to win the award if we could. So if you really appreciate and enjoy Chinese, please go to their website, direction that I could no longer control. So very quickly, I put up a website. 
I put up a Facebook page, and then I put up a team together with three illustrators, two animators, with an app team, and with the people making videos and people um, providing answers and the research assistant. Every day I teach on Facebook with a new phrase, new characters, and we have more than 62,000 people uh, following us on Facebook, and we have a couple hundred thousand people on our website. We also host the, the weekly exam to see how well you do, and at the same time, we also want to have a lot of fun, so we have the, the word search every month, and every month we give the word search, we give you the, the fun games, and we do everything on social media. And then after that, of course, we started putting the whole content together because some people, they prefer doing things in a systematic way. So today you will see we have an iBook with an e-book so you can learn Chinese in a very easy, fun way at your own speed on your iPad or your iPhones. And this is the app we are working on. It's going to be awesome, which will be coming out in a couple months. And then not only the you will learn each character, a lot of people ask me why I started Chinese. There's a long story and a short story. In the film, you already heard about the short story. I wanted to teach my children how to learn Chinese very quickly in a very attractive way. There's a longer story. I grew up in an artistic family. My mother is a calligrapher. This is sort of the work she did. And this is, she didn't do that one. Her master did. And so I grew up in an environment when the whole family, my, my father, he created a beautiful ceramic art. And this is the work between my parents. So by growing up in this mud, brushes, arts, I always wanted to do something. Unfortunately, I didn't have the talent, so I had to study science. And then <laughs> when I was doing my MBA project, I started writing uh, books on computer, and then I started my own internet company, and I started pursuing my career or using my left brain because I forgot that I do have a right brain. And that's when I faced the difficulty of showing my children how they could appreciate the culture I grew up, the root, they gr um, the root I grew up. I started thinking, is there any way that I can break down the great wall of Chinese language? So I used my computer. I broke down thousands of characters. Earlier in the film, you saw a spaghetti chart of the characters. That's just what I did. At night, I enciphered the characters one by one. After doing thousands of them, I tried to identify the pattern. Is there any simple way to recognize a few? Once you know a few, then you can build many more. So people heard, oh, you have a super duper almighty method to teach Chinese. Can you give us a talk at TED? I said, sure. So I gave a talk last year uh, in Long Beach. And the TED talk um, went well. There was an audience about 1,000 people. One of the people in the audience called Bill Gross, he is quite big in LinkedIn. So he blocked something, a, a few sentences talking about my method. In two days, when I was still at TED, enjoying my time, I received about 8,000 people's messages asking me to develop it further. They didn't even know what that was at that time. And then uh, things got, got worse and worse. Um, Forbes uh, wrote an article about my talk because the editor was in the audience. And then my, when my talk went online in May, uh, the whole thing went um, to the and vote for Chinese. OK, so what is Chinese after all the fuss? What is it about? We all know there are so many characters in Chinese language. Some people say 20,000, some people say 100,000. It doesn't matter how many it is. Don't be scared. You don't need to know that many. I don't know that many. We cannot get around by knowing a couple hundred. But you do know, need to know a, a lot of phrases then, and this is why Chinese is powerful. This is a spaghetti chart to remind you how I develop a whole thing on my computer. Uh, you can uh, navigate through from one character to another. And of course, the app will follow the same methodology, but will be very beautiful, very charming, very easy, and a lot of fun. OK, let's dive in. This is a person we all know. When you have two together, that means to follow, three together, that's a crowd. When the person stretched the arms wide, this person is saying, it was this big. And then when the person saying this big, you put extra stroke on top, that means men, adult men. Why is that? Because in ancient China, men had long hair. They had a pin on top. With a pin on top, that means men. 
Now, very quickly, you learn five characters. What else?